a warm welcome to all of you to the YouTube tutorial SNPs Biology and particularly to my second class of Mechanism of Water Absorption. So in my first class we discussed about the passive water mechanism. Today we will discuss the active water mechanism. Ke mein. So before I start the class let me tell you one thing. Do like, share, subscribe to our channel that is SNPs Biology. Press the bell icon so that you will never miss an updates. Okay, so let's start about the active water absorption mechanism. So the first point about active water absorption is root cells are actively involved. Okay, you may have in previous class maybe but I think. कि ये जो एक्टिव वर्ड आता है क्योंकि रूट सेल्स जो होते हैं एक्टिवली इन्वॉल्व रहते हैं ये मैकेनिज्म में एंड द सेकंड पॉइंट इज द एक्टिव वाटर एब्जॉर्प्शन मैकेनिज्म मेनली ऑब्जर्वड इन दैट प्लांट्स व्हिच शो अ लो ट्रांसपिरेशन एक्टिविटी प्लांट्स दैट शो अ लो Transpiration activity. Okay. So, अगर ये जो active water mechanism होता है, ये उन्हीं plant में पाए जाते हैं, जिस पे water transpiration बहुत ही कम होता है. Transpiration कम होता है means what? Water loss भी कम होता है. तो water loss अगर कम होगा, तो plants के अंदर ये जो water H2O ये हाई रहेगा as compared to the soil water, okay? Soil में जो water रहता है ये low amount रहेगा as comparison to the plant water. So how the water can move from low concentration towards a higher concentration? We will discuss this particular point in our uh, in today's class uh, in uh, the non-osmotic theory of absorption, okay? Then the active photo absorption mechanism is mainly divided into two types of mechanism. That is the first one is osmotic theory or we may say osmotic absorption and the second one is non-osmotic theory or non-osmotic absorption. Got it? Then first come to the osmotic theory. First, come to the osmotic theory or osmotic absorption. This particular mechanism was first proposed by two scientists named as Atkins in 1916 and Priestley. In 1922. Okay. And in the, according to this theory, the osmotic pressure or the solute concentration of the cells of root hair is particularly higher uh, in comparison to the soil water. So, let me draw a diagram for this particular theory. This is the root hair. These are the epidermal cells of the root hair. Then the green line marker represent the cortical cells or layer. Then come to the next one that is the endodermis layer that is in the red line mark. Then after that these are the pericycle layer and then after the vascular bundle is there that is these are the xylem elements and this is the in red color 
This is how the phloem cells. Okay. This is the root hair. Outside it is the soil, water, epidermal layer. cortical region endodermis this is the pericycle these are the xylem these are the phloem okay in this diagram we will see then inside the root hair this is the root hair part inside the root hair the osmotic pressure or we may say the diffusion pressure deficit higher as compared to the soil water then due to the high uh, osmotic pressure inside the root hair high osmotic pressure and higher dpd inside the root hair the soil water the soil water enters into the root hair through a semi permeable membrane by the process known as end osmosis and this entry of water is due to the difference in their osmotic pressure so this process does not require does not require any expenditure of energy mark here this process does not require any expenditure of energy so once the water enters into the root hair then the osmotic pressure the suction pressure and the dpd that is the diffusion pressure deficit of the cells of the cells of root hair are decreases okay so simultaneously another pressure increases that is the turgor pressure tp that is the turgor pressure which lead to the turgidity of the cells of the root hair okay now after enter after enters into the root hair cells now the adjacent cortical cells okay now the adjacent cortical cells have a high amount of osmotic pressure or we may say suction pressure diffusion pressure deficit so now the water now this water water from the root cell enters into the cortical cells by that process osmotic diffusion and after it enter into one of the cortical cells then it moves from the cortical cells 1 to the cortical cells 2 then to the 3 then to the continuously and reaches to the endodermis by the same mechanism the water from the endodermis part now enters into the pericycle region okay and from the pericycle region finally the water draws into the xylem part okay and once the water uh, reaches to the xylem part it uh, may develop a pressure that phase it may develop a pressure that phase water height inside this and this lead to a pressure that is the root pressure that pressure is called as the root pressure again i said uh, inside the xylem a pressure may develop that raise the water height inside the xylem column and that pressure is known as the root pressure so this is all about the diagrammatic representation of osmotic theory of active absorption draw this diagram in your notebook make a note if you are facing any queries about this structure or point then go to the comment box do the comments we will provide you notes also okay then come to the second uh, part that is the non osmotic theory this particular theory was first proposed by 
Hi men. In uh, 1951 and grammar in 1959 अगर प्लांट में ट्रांसपिरेशन प्रोसेस कम होता है तो इसका मतलब है प्लांट्स के अंदर ये जो वाटर का अमाउंट होता है ये कंपैरेटिवली हाई रहता है एस कंपेयर टू द सोइल वाटर H2O यहाँ पे लो रहता है तो यहाँ पे वाटर अमाउंट क्या है हाई है यहाँ पे लो है and as we know that the water in the absorption process the water moves from the soil water towards the plant so how can the water can transport from a low concentration towards a higher concentration that is against that is against the concentration gradient the concentration gradient so another important point is the non osmotic theory mainly takes place against the concentration gradient as we know that any process which occur against the concentration gradient that need some energy or we may say metabolic energy and that energy it comes from the respiration process another metabolic pathway that is the respiration process in the form of ATP which is known as adenosine triphosphate Okay, so अगर एक process against concentration gradient में होता है, तो उसे क्या चाहिए? Metabolic energy चाहिए. जो energy उसे respiration process के through मिलता है. Respiration process में कौन सा energy form होता है? ATP, that is adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so here the, for the water movement, for the water movement, हम लोग को क्या चाहिए? Energy, that is ATP. Okay. As the ATP or energy is involved in this process, it is also known as active water absorption. Okay. And uh, if, as we, as I said that, it is related to the respiration process, then what happens? Any factor that uh, influence the respiration process, then it also affect the Water absorption process, the main two examples that relate the respiration as well as the water absorption processes. First one is wilting of roots in flooded areas. And the second one is KCN which is an inhibitor of the respiration process also reduces the water absorption capacity. This is all about today's class, the osmotic and non-osmotic theory of active water absorption. If you have any queries or doubt about today's class, then go to the comment box, do the comments. We will provide our best to you. We are in uh, social networks also in the Facebook and Insta pages. Uh, uh, links are given in the description. Go to the description, click on the links. Do like, share, subscribe to our channel. Press the bell icon so that you will never miss an update. Thank you. Have a good day.